It's Hopalong Cassidy. <laughs> With action and suspense, out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The Ring of the Silver Spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West, Hopalong Cassidy. This famous hero thrills his 60 million fans with action and dangerous adventure. In the role of Hopalong Cassidy is the popular star of the motion picture series, William Boyd. And now, another exciting story of the early West. The Disappearing Deputy. It's a long ride from the Bar 20 Ranch to Willow Creek, but Hopalong Cassidy and his pal California Carlson were glad to make the trip when they received an urgent request from Hoppy's friend, Ed Larrows. Nothing in the note indicated what Ed wanted, but it sounded like he sure needed help. So here they are entering Willow Creek, a bustling little cow town, with its narrow main street flanked by the usual one-story weather-beaten storefronts and the usual quiet of a hot and sultry afternoon. Willow Creek sure changed in ten years, Hoppy. Nah, uh, just grown a bit. There's the blacksmith shop, post office. Yeah, that building there, that's kind of new. Must be a saloon with all them signs on it. Yeah, they could have used that lumber for something better. I can't understand why Ed Lara sounded so desperate in his note. Uh, you think somebody told about his being in prison? Maybe. Could be some of his old crowd looked him up and are making it bad for him. Yeah, and him being a deputy, he can't say too much. Well, we'll soon know. There's the sheriff's office right over there. Mm. Uh, Poppy. Huh? Look at that fella beating his horse. Why, that dirty rattler. Come on. Hip at me, will ya? You broken down cayuse, I'll learn you. Get away from that horse. Who says that? I did. You got anything to back up your hand, stranger? I'm not looking for trouble, but don't lay a hand on that horse again. Oh, you hear that, boys? Bart Benson can't hit his own horse. Get one side, Bart. I'll handle this, hombre. Guess he needs a little working over. Looking for trouble, eh? Well, you sure found it. We start off this way. I'm a-putting daylight through the fuss, gent, who reaches for a shooting iron. Yeah, Jed, the sheriff's coming this way. Nobody's stopping me, Bart. I'll trim his safe. <laughs> you gotta hit him first, Jed. <laughs> he means like this, Jed. All right, get back there. Stay your distance. What's going on here? Get out of here. On it. Go on. Rebel, scatter. Get. All right, Bart, pick Jed up and get him off the road. Oh. And you, stranger, what's your business? My business is kind of private, Sheriff. We just saw this Bart fella punching his horse around. Well, can't blame you there. But this town's like a powder keg. And this ain't helped none. Powder keg? Yeah. One lawman can't do everything. Uh, by the way, you never told me uh, your business. We came to town to look up an old friend. Well, you sure got a snaky right hand, partner. Jed ain't used to being down, looking up. <laughs> Looks like you could use a good right hand, Sheriff. I sure could, with my deputy carrying lead in his arm. Deputy? Uh, you mean Ed Lurz? Yeah, why, yes. You know him? Sure we know him. He's a friend of ours. Where'll we find him? Find him? Well, um, I don't rightly know. You, you, you don't know? No. Nobody knows. He just disappeared. <laughs> Now back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, The Disappearing Deputy. Hopalong Cassidy and his pal California Carlson received an urgent letter from Deputy Ed Larrows of Willow Creek. Hoppy, who never deserts a friend in trouble, rode into Willow Creek unknown. The sheriff informs Hoppy that the man he is looking for, Ed Larrows, has disappeared. They're in the sheriff's office now. Now then, stranger, better begin by telling me your name. Cassidy. I'll write that down. C-A-S-S-I... Huh? Cassidy? 
Hop along, Cassidy. That's just who he is. Bar 20 Ranch. Well, doggone. <laughs> we can cut this chin music out right now, Cassidy. I'm sure glad to shake your hand. Well, I'm glad to know you too, Sheriff. Now maybe you can tell me more about uh, Ed Laros. And I'm afraid he's took us in, Cassidy. Took us in? Why, that feller's straight as an arrow. Yeah, I thought so too. But here's a telegram from Denver in answer to mine. Read it. Ed Lara served three years in prison, thievery, paroled to Bart Benson last Christmas. After I trusted him like I would a son. I think you're moving a little fast there, Sheriff. Well, doggone it, what am I to think? Four banks shot up in one week, and Ed coming with a slug in his arm? Said he was fighting them. Then you can believe he was, Sheriff. Now, a feller ain't gonna run off and hide with a slug in him. He's gonna stay near a dock. He ain't been near the dock since he put a cast on his arm. Lara's arm in a cast? Yeah. That's what I've been trying to tell you. On the last two holdups, one of the men had a cast on his arm. Of course, it was under his coat, but uh, they could tell when the wind blew the coat open. I bet my horse against a bag of stale jelly beans that Lara's ain't the man. You're right, California. Well, Sheriff, if you don't have any objections, I'd like to help you look for Lara's. You got my word, and I'm obliged to you no end. Uh, where are you going now? It's not California, and I'd walk over to the doc's office. Doc's office? Thinking he knows something? Never can tell. He might know if two men were wearing casts on their arms. Hmm, sure a funny place to, to have to go to find a doctor. Yeah, maybe he's at the lunch counter eating corn. What'll it be, gents? Could you point out the doctor to me? Well, you're the first customer I ever had who got sick before he yet. <laughs> oh, he ain't sick. Just wants to talk to him. Oh, that's different. Doc will be back in a minute. That's his cup of coffee next to you there. Uh, uh, while we're waiting, uh, could you get me a stack of flapjacks or chin high? Right. Know a man by the name of uh, Laros? Yes, I do. He's the best man in this town. There's them that would like to make him pay for what they're a doing. But no one can find him. They'll find him when the lawbreakers are caught. I'm just a hoping and a waiting till he can come in again like he always did and say, Liverwurst on bread, hold the mustard and pile on the pickles. Gosh, he sure was particular about his vittles. Oh, well, what you having, mister? Coffee, please. Be right with you. Get the flapjack. Lara's girlfriend. Think she knows something? If she does, she isn't saying it. Yet. Yet? Uh, how do you mean? Shh. Here comes Benson over this way. Darn if his face ain't gonna spoil my vittles. Well, did you find the doc, Cassidy? I'm waiting. I guess saw him going in his office a minute ago. You might catch him there. I ain't a budging until I get my flapjacks. I got me two silver dollars here, Bart. Pitch him to the line. <laughs> Ready and willing to accommodate you, friend. Excuse me a minute, Cassidy. Business before pleasure. That's the line, and I'm pitching. Well, doggone. Look, Hoppy, ain't an inch away from the line. And I think I can beat that. He done it. Hoppy, he done it. Right smack across the line. I think I'll save my other dollar, Bart. You're too darn good for me. <laughs> Suit yourself, friend. It's your deal. Sure it takes wonderful control to lay a silver dollar across a line. Ah, it ain't nothing. Kind of a hobby with me. Bart Benson. Oh, uh, excuse me. Someone calling. I'll uh, see you later. I'm sure you will, Bart. Close that door, Jed. Yeah. I saw you standing talking nice like to that Cassidy, and after the way he clipped me this morning. Shut up. Did you take the back way in and out of town? Sure did. Nobody's seen me. Well, you got to be more careful now Cassidy's hanging around. You want I should blast him, boss? It won't work. Just cause more trouble. I'll handle him all right. You just keep that deputy out of sight till we do two more jobs. And we'll head for the border. And I'm leaving a slug in that Midland cowpoke, Cassidy. Now, there's nobody outdrawing him. We got to outsmart him. And I'm doing it every minute. Now, you get back on up to the hideout. Keep an eye on that deputy. If he gets loose, we're sunk. Don't worry, boss. There ain't nobody out thinking me. Then get on back there. Right in tonight, we'll plan the last two jobs. Yeah, it sure was a good idea putting a cast on your arm and letting them see it. If I ever hear you talking like that again, you'll be buzzard bait, Jed. 
sorry, boss. And I mean that. You be careful nobody trails you when you leave town. Don't worry, I'm awake. I'll get them sandwiches for the deputy and get back up there. Don't do any cooking up there at the hideout. The smoke will bring snoopers around. I know that. What do you think I'm getting sandwiches for? <laughs> a sheriff's going around in a circle. And I ain't having any trouble fooling Cassidy. Everything's running right. <laughs> Good thing nobody knows I'm working for you. Let's me keep my ears open. Just so it ain't your big mouth. Now go on. Uh, tell the boys we split the Abigail mine payroll tonight. <laughs> Good. It'd be like taking candy from a kid. Ah, oh, you're sure smart, Benson. Yeah, it's you get the water hole at sundown. Gonna need some help making up another cast for tonight. <laughs> Doc Fletcher? Yes. Right. You're looking at him if your eyesight is good. My name is Cassidy. I'm working with the sheriff to bring a little law and order to this town. Oh? Working uh, with the sheriff, eh? That's right. I think you can help me, Doc. Well, uh, I don't know if that's true. Uh, A doctor has to learn many things, and uh, one of the first things is to keep his mouth shut. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Wait a minute. Did you say your name is uh, Cassidy? Hop along, Cassidy. That's right. Hmm. Well, now, that, that makes it a little different. Uh, what was it you wanted to know? You put a cast on Deputy Lara's arm about a week ago. That I did, that I did, yeah. Have you had any reason to put a cast on anyone else's arm? What are you uh, getting at? A lot depends on my knowing, Doc. Well, seeing it that way, I can tell you that's the only cast I know of. In your opinion, could a man make his own cast? Well, I guess he could. A temporary one. Could make it out of uh, doby mud, but wouldn't hold up very long. It'd crumble pretty fast. Unless it was held together. Would that's say. what I wanted to know, Doc. Thanks a lot. I don't know that that's going to help you none, but uh, you're welcome anyways. You've helped more than you know. It may put a good man back on his feet. Time you was getting back, Hoppy. Doggone it, I waited round till I had to order another stack of them flapjacks. Yeah. Doc says the only cast he made was for Deputy Laros. Oh, now, ain't that a shame? Maybe we're all wrong, Hoppy. No, I don't think so. Girly, can you wait on me, Pronto? Just wait your turn. You can see I'm busy. Well, I got some riding to do. You ain't gonna do it in here. I'm leaving this note. Fill the order, and I'll be back pronto to pick it up. Leave it there. I'll get to it as soon as I can. Be back in ten minutes. Have them ready. Hey, that's that fella Jed that you smacked yesterday. Oh, he don't look none the better for connecting with your right arm. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. What are you reading other folks writing for, Hoppy? California. This note. Hmm? When this fella comes back, trail him. Oh, but doggone it, Hoppy. I got flapjacks There's no coming. time to argue. I'd be too easy to spot. You trail him and don't lose sight of him. What for? See what that note says? Two liverwurst sandwiches on bread. No mustard. And pile on the pickles. Now back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, The Disappearing Deputy. Hoppy and his pal, California, are trying to solve the mystery of the odd disappearance of Deputy Ed Laros, a friend of Hoppy's. A series of holdups have taken place, and the deputy is under suspicion because he is wearing a cast on his arm, and the holdup man also wears a cast. California has taken up his trail while Hoppy talks to Sheriff Parker. Blasted coyotes. Cleaning out the Abigail mine payroll last night. <laughs> Cassidy, I'm going around in circles, getting nowhere. Folks pointing at me on the street. Now, now, calm down, Sheriff. Uh, to think I was good enough to give that darn deputy a chance, knowing his record like I did. Still think it's Lara's, huh? Of course it is. Nobody else wearing a cast, or somebody would see him. Uh, Sheriff... Speaking about the cast, uh, where would a fellow be apt to find uh, Dobie around here? Well, ain't much of any account, lest it uh, would be on Baker's spread out of town a mile. Anywhere else? 
No, well, yes, back in the drawways where that little chief creek runs into the tram creek. <laughs> Muddy as all get out. Uh, I guess I can find it all right. Say, uh, uh, what's this Doby Mud got to do with this thieving and robbing? I'm going to look around out there, maybe pick up an answer or two. Uh, I just thought of something. Where's that, uh, that pal of yours? I was just wondering that myself. Huh? You mean you don't know where he is, neither? Not just at this minute. Well, he'll be around soon. Well, the way I got it figured, Laros ain't far from here. The fellow ain't leaving a gal. I agree with you, Sheriff. And the fellow in love is going to see that girl, if he's able to. Meaning what? Meaning I don't think he can see her. I'm tying a few loose ends together, and when I do, it'll make a rope. All right, tell me the man, and I'll jail him this minute. It's not that easy, Sheriff. Now I'd better get back to the cafe. California's back yet, or you'll probably be at the cafe. Trying to look over the top of a stack of flapjacks. Um, we was just gonna look you up, Hoppy. Put down the fork a minute. <clears throat> oh, Hoppy, uh, uh, flapjacks ain't no good when they're cold. Did you trail a fellow with the sandwiches? Well, he went about ten miles out of town. Uh, went in a small draw where some quick was running out of. Go on. I didn't take no chance of following him in, but it's sure a good place to hide out. Did he know he was being trailed? I swear he didn't see me, uh, unless he's smarter than I am. We know that fellow was taking those sandwiches to Ed Laros. Is Ed afraid to come in, or is he unable to? Oh, uh, looks like Bart Benson wants to get in on the gab, and he, he's heading this way. And don't sell him short. He's nobody's fool. You think he suspects we followed his friend? I'll soon find out. I hope to find out something else, too. Any trace of Laros, Cassidy? I asked the sheriff the same thing a while ago. He didn't say yes or no. Just said he'd been trailing someone. But he's been doing that for a week. <laughs> he sure has. I'll bet even money Laros is lit out, cast and all. I don't believe Laros got a thing to do with it. Maybe you got an idea who has. Just an idea is all. Uh, Bart, uh, I got two silver dollars here. And they're yours, if you can outpitch me to that crack in the floor. Well, now that'll be the easiest two dollars I ever earned. Pitch them out, Cassidy. <laughs> Hey, you ain't missed it by more than three inches, Hoppy. Ah, uh, you gotta get closer than that. Watch this. Yeah. Well, I'll be darned a foot away from the crack. Uh, yeah, yes. I guess I'm slipping. Ah, uh, you can do better than that, Benson. Try again. I'll lead off this time. Shoot. Well, doggone my height if you ain't missed it by more than ten inches. Ah, uh, hold it, hold it. Don't so, Cassidy. It's yours. Can't figure out what's wrong with my pitching arm. Looks like you're just not concentrating. Concentrate? Yeah, maybe you're right. That's had many darn things on my mind. Yeah, sure wish I had a few dollars to throw. I could get me some jelly bean money right pronto. Yeah, maybe find somebody to throw with you. For me, I gotta get busy. I can help you any, Cassidy. Let me know. I'm willing to work with you. You've proved that, Benson. <laughs> I bet he's mad he lost, Hoppy. His face was sure red. Hey, how come you took advantage of him when you saw he wasn't pitching him good? Hmm? You ain't listening. What are you thinking? I was just watching the sandwich man, Sigmund Benson. Sandwich man? Oh, oh Jed, you mean, yeah. He sure come back here pronto. Hey, hey, you think something's wrong? I think you're mistaken when you say he didn't see you trailing him. Doggone it, and I was sure careful, too. Oh, I'm glad he saw you, California. You are? Uh, how come? I'm gonna play, it's gonna play right into my hand. It's working out better than I hoped. What are you doing back here, Jed? But that old cowpoke followed me to the pass. I hid out waiting for him, but he hightailed it back here. You clumsy ox. This changes our whole plan. Well, doggone it, boss. I didn't know he was trailing me. Now they'll find Laros up there in the hideout. Just what we want. What we want? Are you plumb loco, Bart? No. Uh, Laros don't know who slugged him. I'm still his friend. He swear to that. Well, how's that helping us? Well, here's what we do. Now, you come running in and say you just rode in from the pass and you saw Ed Laros. Then the sheriff will get a posse while everyone's gone. We shake the dust off our feet. But you're a mighty smart man. Yeah, I sure am. Now get out the back way, wait half an hour, and ride in and tell us the good news. I'll have the horses out and back, all ready to ride. (laughs) 
We've been standing out here by this darn hitch rail for half an hour. Ain't nothing happened yet. I don't know as it will. I'm just hoping. Yeah, I suppose the hold-up galoot is going to ride up and say, I'm the man, lock me up. On that order. Why, well, you ain't got a smidgen of proof. That all depends on the next move. Oh, here comes Sheriff Parker. Sure looking glum. Don't let anything drop. We may be wrong. Picking up anything, Cassidy? Not quite sure, Sheriff. I kind of feel like I kept you from going about your business. I shouldn't have asked you to stay. We'll be leaving in the morning. Guess you're kind of convinced that Ed Laro's fooled you as bad as he fooled me. You still think he's guilty, eh, Sheriff? Uh, he's had plenty of time to prove he ain't. I don't see him doing it. Well, look at this rider coming. Must be something after him. He's heading for the hit trail, too. Hey, it's the Jed feller, Hoppy. Sheriff. Sheriff, I seen him. I seen Ed Laros back in the draw. Where at? Just past Bald Rock in a bunch of scrub oak. Brown shack. Get a posse. I've been waiting for something like this. Get the boys rounded up. We're riding for Bald Rock. I'll round up the boys, all right. And then we're going to string him up. Yeah. You coming, Cassidy? Might as well. Come on, California. Well, doggone, your plane sure fizzled out. I don't think so. I'd say it's falling right on out. All right, boys, let's ride. The posse will be right behind us. <laughs> Not much further now, and the posse's almost up with us. The crowd sure is in an ugly mood, Sheriff. Have I got your word you'll protect him from this posse, Sheriff? He's my prisoner. Ain't no posse alive can take him from me. Good, because this is as far as we go. Huh? But what's wrong? California and I are going back to town. Back to town? You ain't going to be doing no good in town. Laros is back in the draw. I think I know what I'm doing, Sheriff. As soon as we ride around these boulders, we're getting out of sight till the posse goes by. You ain't gonna need us anyhow. Ain't no way I can go but straight ahead. Well, you boys do as you darn please. And better get back to town with Lara, Sheriff. We may need your help. My help? In town? Here's where we turn back, Sheriff. I'll be back soon, and I'll show you Lara. You'd better, and I'll show you your bandit. Slow down here, California. Keep out of sight till they go by. Oh, doggone it, Hoppy. You're going back to town and miss all the fun. The fun's all over. Our work is just beginning. I hope we get back in time, California. Now, look here, Hoppy. Seems like you're pretty darn sure of something. You ain't got one bit of proof. Then we'll get a confession. You don't know how. I do. Let's tie off back at the blacksmith shop. Yeah. Where are we heading? In the back of Benson's place. Two stores down this way. Hoppy, there's Benson's horse. The one he was beaten. Then we're in time. Stay here and cover me. I want to look at that horse. Oh, trying to catch a bandit, but got time to be looking over horse flesh. I've seen Hoppy do crazy things, but I ain't never seen him admiring a horse when it's shooting time. California, we're right. Hmm? Shh. Someone coming out the back door. Well, it, it's Benson. It, it looks like he's leaving. Get over there, you lazy critter. Get. Why, that's... Don't reach for your iron, Benson. But why, you... I told you not to reach for that iron, Benson. You sweet back pulpit. I... You don't look like you're going to do nothing, Benson. I got your shooting iron. You're not very smart, Benson. I don't know what you're talking about. I ain't done nothing. You know, what are you running from, then? Running? Uh, I ain't running. I was going to go help the sheriff. Help them catch an honest man who you had parole to you so you could use him in your escapade. Knowing he had a record, he was a handy man to take the fall, eh, Benson? Can't hang a man without proof, and you ain't got none. When I first met you, Benson, you were beating your horse. And when a man will do that, he'll bear watching. Ah, oh, this one be Kyle. Let me finish. And I wish the horse could understand what I'm saying. Because your horse will furnish all the proof we need. That you're the bandit with a cast on his arm. Now back to Hopalong Cassidy. Cassidy, that Bart Benson's walking up and down in his cell raving about a horse. It's a mighty important horse, too, Sheriff. He's your whole case. A horse? Yep. Hoppy's right. When I talked to Doc the other day, he said a man could make a cast out of doby mud. Well, I don't see how the horse fits in. The Doc also told me that doby 
would crumble if something didn't hold it together. I still don't see how... So uh, what's better to hold mud together than horse hair? Nice long hair cut off the horse's tail. Well, I'll be darned. And all the time the horse was standing around just overrunning with proof. <laughs> <laughs> Took Hoppy to see it. But uh, what give you the idea? Well, Sheriff, in the first place, Bart Benson was a dead shot in pitching silver dollars. But when a fellow's been wearing a cast very often, his arm gets pretty lame and helpless. So you knew when you beat him pitching dollars what was wrong with him, huh? Right, but still no proof. However, it gave him the lead I needed. Well, it's that doggone thing. How did you figure it out, Hoppy? Somebody told me, Sheriff. <laughs> Don't get it. <laughs> Don't you remember that saying, horses carry tails? Huh? Huh? <laughs> Goodbye from Hoppy in California. They'll be back soon with an exciting story you won't want to miss. Meanwhile, don't forget to see Hopalong Cassidy at your local theater. Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. The Disappearing Deputy was written by Howard Swart. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production. <laughs> <laughs>